Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take a look at exponential equations and we're gonna see, can we determine an exponential equation when we're given two get points on a graph? So let's dive right into this video, look at an example and see if we can come up with the equation to match. So if you notice here, I have an exponential curve and I know two points on that exponential curve. I have 0, 7, and I have the other point up there at 356. Now we want to determine an equation that will be in the form of y equals a times b to the x power. Remember, a represents our y-intercept, or our starting point, and b represents our multiplier, or our growth rate. So we want to see, can we make an equation that will match those two points? Well, I think the easy one to find here is going to be our y-intercept. But yeah, I can see right there that our y-intercept where this red graph crosses the y-axis, that is at the point 0, 7. So I know that my a value here is going to be a 7. Now, I do not know what my multiplier is here, right? I see that I start at the 0 term and that we're at 7. And then we jump all the way to the third term and we're at 56. If you watched one of my previous, previous videos, you might have remembered me saying, pick a point to find the multiplier, take a point and divide it by the one before it. So I do have 56, but that's the third term. And I don't know what the second term is. I don't know what to divide 56 by because I don't know what the second value is. I cannot use seven here because this is the zero term and it is not the second term. So I wanna show you how to solve a problem when you're given two points and they're far apart from each other. They're not sequential. It's not the first and the second or the third and the fourth. In this case, it's the zero term, skip a couple, and now we're at the third term. So let's see if we can figure that out. To do that, I'm going to write b here as my variable because I don't know what that term is. Right? I see that that's the multiplier. We don't know what the multiplier is. So let's just leave that as b. And I have my exponent here of x. Now, if you notice, I've already used this zero term in my equation. I used the zero term to replace the a. So what I want to do now is I actually want to use the fact that I know that the third term is 56. Right? We're given that point of 3, 56. Well, 3 here represents an x term. 56 represents a y term. So why don't I just take those two numbers, put them into my equation, and then we'll just have b as the only variable left. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to plug in 56 for y equals, bring down the 7, bring down the b because we don't know what b equals. And I know that x here represents 3, so now I have b to the third power. So do you see that I have an equation now with one variable? It's b, our multiplier. And now I can solve this problem. I want to solve it for b. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take both sides, and I'm going to divide both sides by 7. Because I want b by itself. Right now we're multiplying it by 7. So if I divide both sides by 7, the 7s on the right will cancel to a 1. So on the right side, I'm just left with, whoops, just left with b to the third power equals 56 divided by 7, which is 8. Now we're so close there, right? I almost have b by itself. But right now we have b to the third power. I just want b by itself. Well, to get b by itself, I need to take away that 3 there, that cube. And to do that, I just need to take the cube root of both sides. Okay, you might be familiar with square root. We use square root when that exponent here is a 2. But that exponent is not a 2. That exponent is a 3. So we're going to need to take the cube root of 8 to figure out what that b term is. So I take the cube root of 8, and some of you might know that on the top of your head, 
Um, some of you may not know. So, to, so if you don't know, let's go ahead and use our calculator to figure out what the cube root of eight is. So if I'm using my free online calculator powered by Desmos.com, I see that right here I have the square root button, but I also have an n root button. The n root button is gonna allow us to change what type of root we want. We don't want a square root, we want a cube root. So I can go ahead and click on that button, and then I can make my way over to where the root power is, and I'm gonna change that base to be a value of three, and then I need to change what's underneath the radical to an eight, and I see that the cube root of eight is two. The cube root of eight is two, and again, that should make sense to us because two times two times two does equal eight. So the cube root of eight is two. I now have what my multiplier is. My multiplier is two. I can finish off this exponential equation then. Remember, zero term was seven, and now I know that my multiplier is two. That right there is how you create an equation of a graph, an exponential graph, when you're given two points. If you're given the zero term, then you just plug that in as your A value, but you gotta work a little bit to get your multiplier. And that right there on the left side, those are the steps to do that. Take that extra point that you have, plug it in for your X and Y, and then solve for your multiplier. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.